This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website, portfolio, and online store. I'm so happy to have them as a sponsor. They are fantastic. I've used them before, and it's got a simple and easy design for creating websites. They have beautiful templates, drag and drop, and you can easily make your design. But if you want to get in there and modify the code and go a little bit more advanced, they have that option as well. They offer 24-7 support through live chat and email, and plans start at $8 a month and include a free domain if you sign up for a year. For a free trial and 10% off, visit squarespace.com and enter the offer code ZOLO at checkout. A better web starts with your website. Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolo Tech, and we're going to compare Android 4.4.2 KitKat with the new Windows Phone 8.1. Now, as you know, Android comes in many flavors, and this is actually a Galaxy S5 running the latest version of TouchWiz. I'm not a huge fan of TouchWiz, but this phone in general represents what you can do with Android. You can obviously get it in pure Google, you can have HTC Sense or whatever you particularly choose. On Windows Phone 8.1, you pick your device and it's pretty much the same across all devices. In this case, this is a Nokia Lumia Icon. So both are really great devices and should make for a pretty fair comparison, at least about the features and things we're going to talk about. So the first thing and one of the most notable features added to Windows Phone 8.1 is voice control or Cortana. And you can see right here, it's got a live tile and it's flipping around with some news. And you actually set up Cortana as a serious personal digital assistant, sort of along the lines of Siri, but kind of combined with what Google now offers on Android. So you get kind of the best of both worlds, for the most part, right in Windows Phone. But we'll try that out. So let's ask it a simple question. We'll use Google now here, and we'll open Cortana, and we'll just ask it how the weather is, although we know what it is. What's the weather outside? It's currently 59 and clear. And you can see it's taking some time with the Android version of this for some reason. And normally it works pretty well. Let's turn off Wi-Fi. What's the weather outside? It's 59 degrees and clear in Oakmont. So you can see it was pretty quick and we can ask, ask it other things as well. Since I'm in the Pittsburgh area, let's ask it when the last or what the last score of the Pirates game was. What was the last Pirates game score? The Pirates lost to the Brewers 3 to 2. So you can see in this way Google Now was a little bit better. They both came up around the same amount of time, but we got a little bit nicer result with Google Now. Now one thing you can do is kind of set timers or set sorts of things that a, a personal assistant could do with Windows Phone, which is really neat. You could tell it to remind you to notify you the next time someone calls and once that person calls, it will actually pop up and say whatever your reminder is. So I used a separate example in my Windows Phone 8.1 overview of just reminding to give my brother a screwdriver that he wanted to borrow. So I did that, and when someone calls, it pops up and says, remember to give him a screwdriver. So it's pretty neat. It does some neat things like that and has a lot of other features, and it uses Bing for everything. So now, once you hit the search button, you get Cortana. But you can also do things like you can on Siri, like you probably can't on Google Now. What's the best smartphone? No one phone is right for everyone. Windows phone. So you can see you get similar results, and Cortana tries to be a little bit more witty. Uh, let's ask it one final question. What do you think of Bill Gates? So you can see how witty or, or funny Cortana tries to be, and it has a lot of different features, and it's in beta right now, but it's pretty good just to start with.
Now, obviously, one of the reasons people use Android is customization, and that was a big problem on Windows Phone for quite some time. As you can see here, it looks a little bit different maybe than you're used to with Windows Phone, and that's because you can customize it some, but in a different way than you can with Android. With Android, you can make this screen whatever you want, especially if you're using a different theme app such as Themer, or you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. With Windows Phone, you've got live tiles, and you can resize these tiles just by shrinking them like this or blowing them back up and locking them into place, but you still have square tiles everywhere, so it's a very unique look. But you can now change the background, and it has this neat parallax effect. So you can see there's a picture in the background, and as I slide it moves, and then everything kind of sh crunches together in its own unique way, which is really nice can get boring over time, I've heard many people say. But let me show you what, what you can do with this. So here you have themes, and you can choose a photo, and we have backgrounds that they, they supply, and this one's a pretty colorful one. So let's take a look at this one, we'll lock it into place, and we can change the color as well. So maybe we'll change the accent color to, uh, maybe we'll just use this blue here. Actually, I was on that blue. Let's use a purple just to show you. So. You can see the accent color has changed, and now you've got this different image in the background, and it's got that parallax effect. Now with Android, you can go way beyond that with widgets and everything else. So you can see we have wallpapers, widgets, home, cre home screen settings, and with widgets, you can integrate those with your apps if you're not familiar with that. So if you use a newsreader such as Pulse or Google News, maybe we'll take this widget, and yeah, we want to agree. And you can see now we have Geo News. We can move this around. Uh, depending on the app, we can resize it, or the widget, rather. We can resize it to the screen. We can create folders. And having a little bit of trouble here doing it on this one. But you can create folders, and like you have here, and do all sorts of things. Customize it exactly how you like, exactly where you want here you've got the tiles and that's about it so you don't have too much customization although it's a specific look and you definitely know when you're using windows phone one of the new things they added which is a copy of android pretty much that apple copied with notification center is notification center or in this case action center so if we pull down from the top we've got notifications and you can see your quick settings here for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, airplane mode, and rotation lock. And then we can go to all settings from there as well. So there's that notification center. You can swipe off notifications just like you can here. And you've got all of those little quick things. It's much needed in Windows Phone and definitely brings it up to par with the other two platforms. One thing with Windows Phone is you've got a lot of enterprise style settings now with Windows 8.1. You've got all sorts of mobile device management. You've also got a lot of good integration with Microsoft services such as Exchange, things like that. You even have a lot of things such as driving modes now built in and some pretty good voice recognition for that and backups and all sorts of different things. You've got all of these different settings you can see and these are all stock settings. With Android you've got a, quite a few settings as well and probably more with Android. I haven't counted actually between the two but I would imagine you've probably got a little bit more with Android. But both have NFC, both have Wi-Fi, both have Bluetooth, both can customize the lock screens, the home screens, and ringtones and sounds. And you have a lot of different things. Kids Corner, Samsung has also built in a kids mode to the Galaxy S5, and all sorts of other things as well. So it's really nice. Some of the new additions is you can store apps on the SIM card or on the SD card. If you add additional storage, things like that, you can do now on Windows Phone. And it's basically got just as many settings as Android does, which is really nice. That's definitely something that's needed. The keyboard on both devices is very good. On Windows Phone, it's their own keyboard, and it has their own version of swipe. And you can see if I do this here, it didn't recognize it, but I was trying to do Zolo Tech here, and it says speech for whatever reason, but this is their new version of swipe. They don't call it swipe. They have another name for it. But overall, the keyboard is very, very good. As I type, it starts to suggest, just like other keyboards. If you're typing something incorrectly, it suggests changes up at the top. And just like Windows Phone, I have a very good keyboard as well. And here you can see, I've actually 
customize the keyboard because I hate the TouchWiz keyboard. I've changed it to the default Android keyboard, and that's definitely an advantage you get with Android over any other platform. You can change the keyboard to whatever you want. You also have the swipe function built in, and you can see it got Zolotech just by me doing that. And it keeps saying splash for whatever reason, but you get the idea, I think, between the two. And with the keyboards, you've got great functionality on both. Again, you've got that customizability on the Android side, which makes it really nice. One very important thing with both of these devices is battery life. Android has suffered a little bit with battery life over time, where Windows Phone has been pretty good. Both have settings for managing battery life, especially when they get low. And you can see here, we'll go and show you some of that. But let's scroll down on this phone here, and we've got power saving modes. As you can see, we've got battery modes and both of them have pretty large batteries. So in this case, these phones are pretty exceptional when it comes to battery. But overall, I've found, over time anyway, Windows Phone is a little bit better with battery. So you can see here's some settings built in on the Galaxy S5. It's been on for one day, five hours, 18 minutes. Here's your breakdown of what's using the battery. On this side, you can tell it can serve battery life when battery's low, now until the next charger always, and that's just a simple setting in battery savers on. It's got estimated time remaining, which is really nice, 21 hours in time since last charge, less than one hour. And I did just take it off the charger, so you're not going to see all that data here. But if you swipe over, you've got the same sort of thing. Here's your usage, and it breaks it down nicely. It's really great on both phones, and I would say Windows Phone's a little bit better in the battery department, but overall, they're about the same, and they give great information about both. Some things that happen to use a lot of battery is when you've got a lot of apps multitasking. And that's one thing Android is known for, is exceptional multitasking. However, Windows Phone has some pretty good multitasking as well. And to get to that, to see what other apps are running, you just hold the back button on a Windows Phone, and you've got these little cards that pop up. On this phone, you tap this drawer, and this may look a little bit different depending on the version you have. But on Windows Phone, it's pretty simple. Here's the last app. You'll see the X appears. If I want to close it quick, I can just swipe it off the screen to the bottom, or I can tap the X, and that closes out the apps. One by one, you have to close them like that. On Android, you can see I have a close all. I also have a task manager that lets me see all the in-depth information going on as well. So you get a little bit more information on the the Android side and the ability to close everything much quicker, but you do have true multitasking on both devices, which is definitely something that's fantastic and just about every platform has now, but I think Android and Windows Phone handle it exceptionally well at this point. Now, updates to the phone is something that is definitely a problem on Android, at least has been over time. Because there's so many different versions with Samsung and HTC and then the Google Play editions, generally the Google Play editions get the updates first, and then they slowly roll out as Samsung makes their changes, things like that. And then you have to wait for the carriers to approve them, and that's really a big hassle. That's one area where Windows Phone has kind of stepped up quite a bit. Similar to the, the other competitor here, they allow you to download them as soon as they come out by giving you a developer mode app. And that does void your warranty, uh, so that is a little bit of a, a bad part to that. But if you want to have the early software, you can download Preview for Developers. Simply enable it, and you'll be able to download the latest OS when they release it, as 8.1 was able to when it came out. So that's definitely an advantage over Android. However, Android is getting updated more and more, but you can you can definitely depend on Windows Phone to get updates and you can have them right away and not wait for the carriers. Uh, you can wait for the carriers if you want to, but it takes a lot longer, but they're available right away. So that's definitely an advantage on the Windows Phone side. Cameras on Windows Phone tend to be exceptional, especially with the Nokia brand phones. The camera on these Nokia phones, this is a 20 megapixel camera. You also have the other PureView camera on the larger phones. Uh, or some of the other Nokia phones, and they're really exceptional. They're probably some of the best out there. They compete with just about any camera phone out there and are better than most, uh, if not all. So that's definitely an advantage that Nokia has. Hopefully Android comes up in that, that 
way as well. This has a 4K camera on it, but it's still lacking some of the quality that you get from this camera. And I am assuming at this point it's from the, the software, but we don't really know for sure. Hopefully Google can fix that and some of its updates. Uh, but right now I would say Windows Phone has the jump, at least on the higher hardware as well. Finally, let's talk about apps. Apps on Windows Phone has been probably the biggest problem out of all of these. On the Google Play Store, you've got a ton of apps. You can search for pretty much anything you want and you'll find it. And in the case of Windows Phone, that's not always true. For example, Instagram just recently came to Windows Phone and it's still in beta. You'll see if I scroll down here to Instagram, it's Instagram beta. Works fine, it's from Instagram but it's still in beta and it wasn't there for a very long time. Now there are apps to kind of compensate for that difference and you'll find plenty that do what you want to do, but you probably won't find the same apps. For example, before Instagram came out, there were other apps that tried to use the Instagram service, but had to make it their own thing and it wasn't exactly the same. Now you will find your favorites such as Facebook and, and Twitter and things like that and they integrate well in the Windows Phone platform but it's not the same as Android when you just have tons and tons of apps. For example, I searched for my bank. My bank app is available on iOS and Android but it's not available on Windows Phone. I can use the browser to go to it but it's not there in an app form. That's true of a couple different banks I searched for just to do that before this for a test and they weren't there. So that's definitely something that's uh, needs to be fixed and hopefully will be sooner rather than later with the Windows Phone platform. If you go into the App Store, they've made some strides to change it and, and organize it a little bit better. And you will find some Xbox games that you won't find on other platforms. But for the most part, you're just not going to have the same exact apps. It's getting really close, but at this time, we're just not there yet. And once they come out and, and kind of fix that problem, I think you could easily go between any platform at this point. But I'd love to hear what you have to say about Windows Phone 8.1 or Android. Uh, which do you prefer and why? Or maybe you don't prefer either and you're using something else. Let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.